everyone who praises the movie, I had never heard that element of it before yeah, I watched what the do movie. You, what do you usually hear? When, when I usually you, hear Pinhead. He's a cool slasher villain or something. See, okay, let's, and I'm ha- like, let's have this talk. Because when I was going into this this movie the first time, yeah. I was expecting Pinhead to be the Michael Myers that Jason Voorhees, where he's like a very, he, he's the he's the pinnacle guy. He's, mm-hmm. the, he's the, the dude. And he is in a sense where he shows up and you feel intimidated because you know the powers that he holds. Well, but he isn't that force that's just like, if anything, Frank and Julia are really like the the, mm-hmm. the real antagonists in this movie. So it's like the the, the other the Hellraisers they seem to be just like kind of there because that's their job. Well, and and the thing about the Cenobites too is it's by by happenstance that Pinhead because the reason Pinhead yeah. comes out as the most um, uh, like personable is because he gets the most lines. That's true. Uh, and the only Do you reason- think though it isn't like an established thing that he's kind of the leader because it seems he, like he he is he is the leader, but he wasn't intended to be. What sure. what I read was that um, they they by total happenstance ended up giving him most of the lines because okay. the other people couldn't talk with the makeup. Oh well, that makes sense. So they, especially so, with the 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 two, the so, big guy, and then the chatterbox guy. <laughs> yeah. So so they said that they just gave it to the two who could talk. So they gave it to him, uh, and the, they gave and it to the, the and, and the the, the girl with one. the neck yeah. thing. So oh, okay. Yeah. So th- the fact that Pinhead came out was like the one that it focused on was just by total happenstance. They were meant to be just a crew, where they would like probably talk equally yeah. and be like, oh, okay, okay, that's interesting. Um, so it's interesting that he's sort of like taken off like that because again, Pinhead, does, Pinhead doesn't do anything in this movie that would make you feel like he is like the iconic villain or something. No. If, 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 and if, if anything, anything, he doesn't even get to that point till the third movie. Yeah. Well, and if anything, I preferred it when he wasn't that. I agree. I really, I, 100%. I really loved this first movie and I really loved it uh, as like a character piece between all of these different characters yes. and this force. Yep. And when I looked at it like that, I actually thought that the Julia character, uh, was really interesting yeah. and really crazy. And it actually reminded me, I don't know if you've ever seen it. Have you ever seen the movie under the skin? Oh, is that with, uh, Scarlett Johansson? Yeah. She's, oh yeah. She's, she's the, the alien, alien and she, she has this really expressionistic Im- uh, images of, of her, luring these men into this like pit where she's going to rip their insides out and stuff like that. She's going to eat them. Yeah. Um, and that's what it kind of reminded me of where she's luring men at the bars to come in and bring him, bring him into Frank. Cause I guess we should, we should mention that aspect. The, uh, Frank gets torn apart in the other dimension by the Mm -hmm. Cenobites. Um, but then when Larry and Julia and everyone move into, uh, Frank's house, Frank accidentally bleeds. Uh, he, he moving a bed, he, scrapes his hand on a nail pretty deep cut and he yeah. ends up bleeding all over the attic and that f- that that blood ends up being sucked up by the floor and sort of re-energizing frank's soul and spirit into yeah. another flesh form so then he conspires with with julia who who misses the sexual pleasure of frank yeah because it just seems like julia has become bored Almost after she experienced like yeah. s- the really intense relationship she had with Frank, whether it be negative or positive, she seemed to almost miss just yeah. the, t- the the tension there. Yeah. So she she was basically uh, just uh, totally seduced by Frank to the point where she is willing to feed Frank. Uh, all of these men from around town uh, so that he can keep building his yeah. body and and the makeup as his body gets increasingly uh, sort of like uh, reconstructed from the inside out yeah. uh, is pretty phenomenal. Yeah, you got like the full muscle. Like you can just see every muscle at one point because yeah. he doesn't have any skin. That's like the last step, yeah. which is funny. To It's almost like that became the iconic almost – body of these victims as we see the second and third movie you know what i mean like you almost you only see frank in this movie as like the the skinned you know muscle or whatever and then that becomes like the trope of what you see constantly in the sequels in the rest of the sequels yeah Yeah. they were like we got to reference the skinless man (laughs) exactly (laughs) (laughs) um yeah and I, i i actually thought that he does some pretty solid um uh editing there when when julia is being sort of like sort of like repossessed almost by her sexual experiences with frank and frank is like using a knife to like cut her clothes off and like um it's it's cutting between that and uh larry trying to like move the bed and it's like really ominous yeah uh while this is all uh kind of kind of happening but ultimately frank reveals that these Cenobites, these these sort of otherworldly, other dimension creatures, um, who 
I was kind of disappointed to find out that they were all human in the sequels. I kind of liked this idea that they were almost like interdimensional yeah, or like, I did or, too. or almost like aliens or something like that. Like I didn't need an explanation. I kind of liked that there was no explanation that they were just this other it place. Made them, it, that, that uh, mystery made them just scarier. Like yeah. there was just that element of the supernatural that you just don't understand. And therefore it's infinitely more scary to you. Mm-hmm. That's what this first movie really establishes well, because when they show up, you just know that they're insane powerful and that they're not going to do anything nice with that power you know there we've already seen the hooks we've seen them rip people apart you know it's going to happen so when they just pop up and you know nothing about them the only thing you can feel is really fear yeah you know whereas in the second and third they kind of steer towards more of a background characters and stuff and you're like well now the they're human now i can i can empathize with them yeah and that's weird because it just takes away the fear a little bit yeah, and I, I don't really think that they... I mean, like, possibly there's something interesting they could have done by analyzing that, and I, I just don't know I that think they, they really do it okay interested. in the second one, which we'll get into. Like, yeah. I didn't mind the pinhead backstory and stuff, and, like, having him kind of, like, split between a good oh, guy I, and a bad... I, I, I love the prologue where they show you how he got made. Yeah, that but, was but, awesome. But again, I kind of like that they didn't explain anything about it, and then, again, they have to spend the, the whole third movie explaining, explaining the whole everything. thing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. it's just... It's, it, it, it's interesting. Uh,